Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday's edition. Uh, today's recipe is um, kind of a two part. Uh, I am still working on uh, the fundraiser. I have 37 bags sold out of 50. Uh, I will be making the donation today uh, regardless whether I sell the other 50 or not. I'm still sticking with as if I sold 50. I just want to show you before we go into the recipe what the bag will look like. Something like this, a yellow or a blue bag. Um, again, whether you keep it for yourself or you gift it to someone else, that's the point of the whole thing. Uh, if you take the tissue out, inside the gift bag is a cardstock copy of the recipe, which we will be finishing today. It's got a package of our Tuscan style chicken, a knife, and the close cut. So again, I've got it packaged, so whether you are gifting this or keeping it for yourself, that uh, it is ready to go. Uh, I am thankful to you. We are thankful for what we have here in Canada and uh, giving back and so thankful that the government is now upping the double uh, matching to three million. So it's awesome, it's amazing. So with that said, uh, today's recipe is the rest of the chicken Kiev. Uh, for those of you who do follow me on all socials, uh, I made a reel uh, day before yesterday, so that would be Monday. Um, and I started the process of the chicken. Um, and again, the rest of the, the bag will have the recipe in it, uh, giving me a few tips and tricks on how to create the uh, chicken Kiev. So what I did in the reel was I cut the chicken already in half with the close cut. I froze the garlic butter, making it into pats, and I rolled it into the chicken, seasoning it both with salt and pepper on the top, and then we've got this. Now, you then put it into the freezer for about a half of an hour, and this is what we're left with. Now, like I said to you in the beginning, uh, for those of you who are just popping on, hello Carol. Um, in the beginning, like I said, we're doing a two-part recipe because we need a little side. And because this is going to kind of cook, I want to show you guys what it looks like. While this is cooking, we're going to make an orzo, uh, a side of orzo. And uh, we're going to do that recipe as well. So, in the um, containers here, I have the flour, the egg, and the breadcrumbs with two tablespoons of the Tuscan seasoning. And again, it would be what you would get in your kit if you bought it. So we're just gonna wrap the, the uh, flour, dip it in the egg wash, just kind of taking the excess off and then rolling it. And I try to pat the ends down as well and then I'm just putting that in the breadcrumbs and then I'm going to lay it on my tray. So I did do some on Monday, I did two pieces. Uh, it was very late, it was probably 8 p.m. by the time I got it all done. Um, so we hadn't had them for dinner, uh, but we snacked on them. Because if you can see here, let me just show you quickly after I do this, let me just show you. It's a nice size, it's not too, too big. I wanna say it's about a two ounce pieces of chicken. Uh, great uh, if you don't wanna have a huge piece. Um, it's, uh, it would make even a nice uh, side with salad. Uh, chicken Kiev is uh, one of those recipes that I have made uh, kind of when I do make it, I'll do several uh, not just as few, just so that I can then freeze it. Anything that I have to kind of fart around with this kind of stuff. Uh, again, it's not hard, it's just I like to do a little bit more. So again, I'm just going to uh, breadcrumb it, and then again, I am doing it in the air fryer. So the recipe that you will get with your kit, if you have bought it, is 
Uh, it gives you both the option for deep fry or air fryer. Uh, and again, I'm just trying to lower the fat a little bit. That's why I'm doing my air fryer. Those of you who know me and know me well know I adore my air fryer. And so it's just more convenient. And these chicken breasts, you after you do them in the butter, you put them in the freezer and that's why they're so easy to work with when it comes to breading them like this. So just easily again, I'm breading them, coating them up, I'm putting them on the ends as well and laying it on the air fryer. And then we're gonna to get to our side, which is our um, orzo. And again, I just wanted to show you guys uh, the simplicity of this recipe, but the deliciousness of it. And for those of you who did make a purchase, thank you. Um, if you know somebody that you might wanna gift this to, somebody may be having a bridal shower, even a baby shower, um, you, we all forget how, uh, hungry we are after a baby and how life is a little bit different after. Uh, this makes a really nice gift as well. It's going to be all wrapped up as you can see there behind me, all ready to go. Okay, so you can see there, really simply, nice size in my opinion. I'm just going to rinse my hand for a second. And then I'm going to toss these into the air fryer for 20 minutes. Now, I did them on Monday, like I said, and I did cook them for 20 minutes. My suggestion would be to put a food thermometer, so I just use our Pampered Chef thermometer, obviously, and I did check the temperature to make sure the internal temperature got to, uh, for chicken, it says anywhere between 165 to 170. So that would be my suggestion. I am going to start the air fryer for the 20 minutes, like I had done on Monday, and then we'll check it after that. I did flip it halfway through, which my air fryer will tell me to do. And again, putting it on the air fryer mode for 20 minutes. Okay, so we've got that mess out of the way. And now we're gonna start our sock. Okay, I am indecisive. For those of you who know me and know me well, know me well, know I like to eat and I love food. I could not decide which orzo recipe to do. So I printed both. I've got things out for both, but I think I'm going to go with the Parmesan garlic orzo as a side with the chicken key. So I took out my cast iron. This is our new cast iron enameled pot. Um, it's a great size. I would use that if I was doubling this recipe, but because again, it's just Dave and I, the girls are obviously back to school. I am going to use my 10 inch uh, pan. This is the nonstick stainless steel pan. It now comes in an eight and a half that just came out this spring. It also comes in a 12 inch and a 12 inch uh, wok. And just a side note, if you do have induction, these pots work on induction, so it's great. So, I have already pre-cooked my orzo, it's just drained there, and we're going to start on the pot. So I'm just gonna turn you all here, and again, I could not decide what recipe uh, up until about 10 minutes ago, and that's why I have taken so many things out. Um, now you're cooking, oh my goodness. There's the other recipe there. This is the other recipe, which I will share as well. I'm gonna share both these recipes because they sound amazing. So this one is a lemon orzo and it's lemon rind, oregano, lemon zest, parsley, and mint. Like, doesn't that sound amazing? All of those sound amazing. Hi, Pat, welcome. Um, but I'm kind of feeling like in a cheesy kind of creamy mood and that's why we're going with the Parmesan garlic. Um, and what you would do for the lemon orzo is you would start the pot of water with a uh, peeling of the lemon and you would cook that with chicken broth in the pot. Uh, so because I didn't do that, we're just starting off right off the bat in the pan. And again, we're going to start with, in a large pot, with salted water, boil the orzo. I already did that. I wanted you guys to be 
already there. We're gonna melt the butter over medium heat and I need a quarter of a cup of butter, okay? And just gonna open my butter. Hope everybody's Wednesday is lovely. It is very foggy still here. They said by nine o'clock this morning that the fog would probably be dissipated. It is not. It is crazy town still here, but that's okay. It's not snowing today. Yesterday, Mother Nature didn't get the memo that it was middle of March and we shouldn't have snow. So, one cup. So we need a quarter of a cup of butter and I'm gonna throw that in the pan and we're gonna melt that. And then we are going to put garlic and we need two teaspoons of minced garlic. So that means like four cloves in my opinion. And I am going to use my garlic press. Oh, maybe I should take my garlic press out. I took my lemon press out, my citrus press, just in case I decided to go that route. So I am just gonna put the garlic right into the pan. Again, do not have to peel it. You can see my peeling is right there. Fresh garlic. I know I've said it before, but for those of you who might not have heard it, those jars of garlic, the minute you open a jar of garlic, two weeks later, your garlic is no longer fresh. This is the best way to get fresh garlic, is to just squeeze it. You can see how, we're on garlic rim. You can see how easy that this is to maneuver. I do not have to peel it. And I can simply just squeeze it right over my pan. Even these big heads, it's awesome. And I'm gonna do one more, three. And we've got the four cloves of garlic in the pan right now. Apparently I'm throwing garlic around. I love the smell of garlic butter. Oh my God, it smells so good. I'm not sure I'm gonna last for dinner for this. And there we go. All right, so we've got that going on here. And we're just gonna let this cook until it's browned a little bit, okay? You see there, it's just the garlic and the butter. And I need a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. So I am going to shred my Parmesan right onto a plate. We have a messy garlic person, aren't I? Goodness. Smells amazing, doesn't matter. Okay, move all this out of the way. And I'm going to use my fine grater now this is our old version of the fine grater. So for those of you who have this one, you know how amazing it is. The newer one is, uh, or if you don't have a grater, all of them do come with a safety on them. Uh, normally I would suggest using the safety, but for something like Parmesan, I am just gonna use the end of the cheese. And I don't really have to watch my fingers all that much and I'm just using a straight Parmesan now I mean if you wanted to buy your Parmesan already um, already shredded that's fine as well um, just a note about this recipe this orzo recipe is so good as a side obviously it also is delicious with uh, adding any protein right to the pan. Uh, this is one of those recipes that I will often use as a side and the next day, and again, I normally double the recipe, that's why I was trying to figure out the pot. Uh, I will then reuse this recipe and add a protein to it and just give it a different kick because it is so incredibly flavorful. So you see there that the garlic is browned, so that's exactly where we want it. 
Um, we are going to stir in the orzo. So again, I've just pre-cooked the orzo. I've just drained it with my mesh drainer. Just going to add that in. And just an, uh, also a small note that I cooked. Let me turn that down. I cooked my orzo al dente uh, because I don't really like a mushy pasta. And orzo, in my opinion, could cook really fast because it's so thin. All right, so I'm just stirring in the orzo. I did turn the temperature down to a medium heat. Uh, I did have it on a medium high for the garlic butter. But now that the garlic is browned, I will now, I just turn it down. And I'm just coating the orzo, just stirring that in in the nonstick pan. And again, this is why when you're doubling the recipe, I would suggest a thicker pot. You can see there that, that, that this one is just a little bit easier. It's a little nicer for that. Um, I am now going to add two tablespoons of milk. So today I'm just going to use a regular milk. There's a lot of times where I don't even have milk in the house and I'll just use a heavy cream. Also, if you are lactose intolerant or plant-based, absolute, oh, wow. <laughs> Throwing the milk everywhere. Uh, if you are plant-based, lactose intolerant, uh, go ahead and use any plant-based milk. Oftentimes, that's what I do. Uh, I normally don't keep milk in the house, uh, but I thought I would buy some today for this recipe. Uh, I could have, again, used heavy cream and I could have used the uh, almond milk that I've got in there. And I just used the measure all cup just to measure that out. Just added a little bit of milk. And I just added, I'm gonna add the cheese to that. I'm adding, I'm adding a quarter of a cup of shredded cheese. This is a really good, again, creamy side. While this is going, the air fryer is telling me it's halfway through. I just want to show you all what our chicken keeb looks like at the moment. So you can see there it's getting brown just as nice as if you deep fried it, a little bit less fat. So I'm now just gonna turn it over. And then I'm gonna continue the other 10 minutes on the other side. And start that back up. Okay, I'll stir in the cheese again. So we've got the milk, the cheese, Got the garlic, a little bit of butter. Obviously, it smells incredible. Uh, I need some parsley and then some salt and pepper, and then that's it. And again, this recipe is amazing when it comes to a reheat and it comes to a wanting to add a protein even the next day. It's incredible. So I've got some pearly parsley. And again, I only need one tablespoon of curly parsley and then some salt and pepper and our orzo is done. Now again, <laughs> indecisive me couldn't decide which recipe. So I am going to post two recipes today. I'm going to post this one, which I got a couple years ago off all recipes. Um, Dave doesn't like rice. Uh, when he went to university, he and his buddy uh, only had a rice cooker and a hot diggity dogger. He still loves hot dogs, for those of you who know him well. He still loves himself a good hot dog, but he's not a huge rice fan. And so I was alternatively trying to find some different recipes that we could use as sides. Um, and so I stumbled upon this one and then found this uh, lemon one as well. Uh, both of them are amazing, but I couldn't decide with the keys which side I wanted to go with. So today we went with the cheesy, um, kind of that delicious, not too heavy side. And then I'm just gonna grab some salt and pepper
And we've got some basic tools that we use today. We've got a great investment piece, which is our non-stick stainless steel. We use the garlic press, which those of you who know me and know me well, know how often I use my garlic press. We've used the measure all cup. We've used the grater, which again, I should have noted, the handle can fold all the way down. It can go all the way up so you can shred right over to the bowl. Or again, you saw me tip it in onto its side and you can shred it that way. Note that there is a safety on all of our shredders to save your knuckles. And they are easy to use, easy to clean, dishwasher safe. And don't forget that all of our products are warrantied for at least one year. And if you do not love your products, please let me know because I always love everyone to love their products as much as I do. Guys, this is an easy side dish that is delicious. You can see there, a little bit cheesy. I might even add a little bit more cheese when I go to serve it tonight. We've got the heave that's going on there. And that's an easy peasy side dish that took us all of 15 minutes. Now, you would pre-do your water. Um, cooking, my suggestion is cooking your, um, your risotto in, this isn't risotto, uh, cooking your orzo uh, kind of al dente so that when you do put it into the heat, it gets a nice tenderness to it that it's not overcooked. It's, uh, there's nothing worse to me than a uh, soggy orzo. And again, I will be posting both the garlic, Parmesan garlic orzo, as well as the lemon orzo. And for this lemon orzo recipe, you need the zest of a lemon, a cup of orzo, two and a half cups of chicken broth, dried oregano, uh, butter, and then finely chopped mince and parsley. So again, pretty easy recipes, pretty staples. Both of them are amazing. Both of them are great. This lemon one, just an FYI, is really good cold the next day. What I have done to this cold, to this lemon one cold, I have added cucumbers and uh, red onions, and I have put a little bit of feta into it, and the next day I reused it as almost a cold salad versus a warm side dish. So I am all for doubling a recipe and then reusing it so that maybe the next day's dinner is a little bit different, but not as much work. So, I am just about to show you guys what currently the key is doing. You can see there, it's bubbling, it's browning. I haven't put it into the deep fryer. It's only on my air fryer. If you don't have an air fryer and you are wondering, do you need an air fryer? I'm gonna tell you, you do. And that's just my opinion, because I love it. Uh, listen, Carol, I'm not sure about cilantro. You know me and cilantro. Uh, but you do you, Carol. <laughs> you do you. Um, anyhow, if you ha don't have an air fryer and you're wondering if you need one, my answer would always be yes. If you don't have an air fryer and you're wondering if possibly you can get your hands on an air fryer, please hit me up. I could totally help you with that. It's amazing. Um, I am so glad you're here today on a Wednesday. I hope you have a beautiful day. The fog is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. The fog is dissipating. Uh, it should turn out to be a nice day. It's not snowing, so right off the bat, it's a nice day. So, what's for dinner? Chicken kiev uh, with a side of orzo, Parmesan garlic orzo. It's what's for dinner tonight. And again, for those of you who did make a purchase for the fundraiser, I cannot thank you enough. So far, I have sold 37. I still have more. If you know somebody who you might be able to share it with, that's fine. I'm still making the donation as if I've sold 50, um, and it's all gift wrapped and ready to go, whether you keep it for yourself or gift it to someone else. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Donating to the Canadian Red Cross, who in turn is donating it to Ukraine, and in turn you get something this fabulous. So, uh, including the recipe card for the chicken key that we're having tonight. Uh, have a great Wednesday. Thank you all for being here, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.